back another day, another time. I'm going to bring forth a little bit of information. You know, hopefully, hopefully you can go along with the scriptures and understand what is happening. Okay, and what was the purpose of Christ? The purpose of Christ in how did we get here in this state that we're in? All right. So I'm going to bring forth some books. I'm going to bring forth some books. Because everything is books. Everything is books. You know, a lot of people don't like to read. But you're going to have to read. You're going to have to read. Reading is fundamental. That's why there was a term back in the day, riff. Reading is fundamental. So let's go into the Apocrypha, right, and see what happened. Let's go in the book of Baruch, okay, the third chapter, Baruch, the third chapter, and it says, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Okay, so what is the curse? The curse, number one, there are many different curses that have been put upon us. Us is who? These are not the people of the Lord. They're not cursed. Okay? These are the people of the Lord. We have been cursed. Okay? So when the Bible is speaking about, you know, in Baruch, he says, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. See that? So what does it mean that we are in our captivity? These people have never been captured. Okay? Let's deal with that. Look at these people. When have they been captured? They've been up in Europe. Okay? So what I'm using is books to show you what the scripture is talking about. But let's go into this book here. Right, I've told you all about this book. This book is called Slavery, the Anglo-American Involvement in Slavery. Right, so here it is. We are being captured. Right, I want to show you us being captured. These are curses. These are curses. Okay. So here is the slave fort, Cape Coast, Castile, Ghana, a trading fort built by the Swedes in 1655 and soon after acquired and enlarged by the British. So the Swedes and the British, which were our enemies. So what was one of the purposes of Christ? Let's look at this in the book of Luke. One of the purposes of Christ go up into the gospel, go up in the gospel of Luke, All right, second chapter, first chapter of Luke, blessed be the Lord power of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, his people are the Israelites. These are not the Israelites. So you put this garbage in your mind that they're the Jews, right? You put that garbage in your mind. You don't know. You have not studied. You've been told over and over and over that these are not the people of the Lord. Okay? Now, why is that? They were converted. They were converted. Now, how do we know that they were converted? So for you to know that they've been converted, you have to go to this book, the 13th tribe. This is going to give you their region that they occupy, the time span. Okay. This is Kazaria. 
okay? This is turkey. I'm going to show you that. See that? This is turkey, right? This is turkey, right? This is the Kaza Empire. Caucasians. So for you to understand the Bible, you must have these books. And if your pastor, teacher, minister, deacon is not teaching you this, then you are being taught lies. You are being taught lies. So these people, these people that say that they're the Jews lived in that region and they were converted into believing that they are the people of the Lord. See that? So now, let's go to that. Let's go to that. Let's go to that. Let's go to the conversion. If you go to page 59, it says the religion of the Hebrews, Riceberry, had exercised a profound influence on the creed of Islam. It had been a basis for Christianity. It had once scattered proselytes. A proselyte is someone that is not of that nation, but they turn over or change or convert. But the conversion of the Khazars to the undiluted religion of Jehovah is unique in history. At the beginning of the 8th century, the world was polarized between two superpowers representing Christianity and Islam. See, so now, if you are studying the Bible, you must study history. You must study religions and their creation when they were created, and who created, and where were they? Their ideological doctrines were wielded to super politics pursued by the classical methods of propaganda, subversion, and military conquest. Millions of people have been killed in the name of these philosophies. Let's further move on. The reason for the conversion to Judaism of the king of the Khazars, who have previously been a pagan. So these people are pagans. See that? These people are pagans. They are the Khazar Empire. It's as follows. He had adopted Christianity, then he recognized its falsehood and discussed this matter which greatly worried him with one of his high officials. The latter said to him, O king, those in possession of sacred scriptures fall into three groups. Summon them and ask them to state their case. Then follow the one who's in possession of the truth. So he sent to the Christians for a bishop. Now there was with the king a Jew skilled in argument who engaged him in disputation. He asked the bishop, what do you say of Moses, the son of Abraham? and the Torah which was revealed to him. The bishop replied, Moses is a prophet, and the Torah speaks the truth. Then the Jew said to the king, he already admits the truth of my creed. See that? So let's further move on.
want to give you all a section that was highlighted as to their who they were. Here we go. About the time, page one, verse one. About the time when Charlemagne was crowned Emperor of the West, the eastern confines of Europe between the Caucasus and the Volga was ruled by a Jewish state known as the Kaza Empire. At the peak of its power from the 7th to the 10th centuries, it played a significant role in shaping the destinies of Middle Evil and consequently of modern Europe. What is he talking about? This little empire right here. Bang. See that? That little empire right there. That's who he's talking about. And who is that little empire? Bang. That was never us. That was never us. They are not us. They are not us. They do not match what I'm going to show you in the scriptures. Look at him. Look at him. How do we know biblically that Moses never looked like that? Let's go. Let's go into the book of Exodus. How do we know that Moses was a black man? How do we know that Moses was a black man? Let's go to Exodus, the second chapter, 15 verse. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But when Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, how is it that you are soon come to help us? And they said, an Egyptian, a what? An Egyptian came to help us. Does this man look like an ancient Egyptian? Does this man look like an ancient Egyptian? No, he does not. The Egyptians are black, okay? The Egyptians are black. Let's further prove that Moses was a black man. So showing you that Israelites are people of color. Good. Showing you that Israelites are people of color. Let's go to Exodus, the fourth chapter. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto me. For they will say, The Lord that had not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is in thy hand? He said, A rod. He said, Cast it to the ground. And he cast it to the ground, and he became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord power of their fathers, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, have appeared unto thee. And the Lord said furthermore unto them, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. See that? Look at the color of my skin. He said, put your hand into your bosom. Right? And he said, and when he took it out, behold, it was leprous. See that? As snow. So this man here has got leprosy. That's what you call white. See that? They've got leprosy. Good? So he said, take your hand back out now. And his hand came back to his natural color. His hand came back to his natural color. So they have leprosy. These are not the people of the Lord. This is the hell that you're in. But what is Christ coming to do? Christ is coming to save you. Let's go back to Luke. Okay, this, this, the first chapter. What is Christ coming to do? Christ is coming to save you from these cats and the hell that you're in. Let's go back to Luke, the first chapter, 
68 verse. Blessed be the Lord power of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David and has raised up as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. From our what? From our enemies. What enemy is it talking about? Let's come back to history now. What enemy is it talking about? Let's look at the fort. Christian Borg Castle, Ghana built in 1660 by the Danes, which is the Danish, who bought the site from the paramount chief of Aka for a hundred dollars, hundred ounces of gold. The British took over in 1850 and the castle flew to Union Jack as residence of governor's general of the Gold Coast until Ghana's independence. It now houses Ghanaian heads of state. So these dark people sold you to these people. So they are your enemies. So you go to Ghana, you all this talking about you black and you this and you down, good. So let's look, look at slavers, black people enslaving us. Let me read that. So Christ is coming back. So this is the British naval officers attended a levy of the King of Dahomey. Relationships with African rulers involved flattery as well as shrewdness from the start to the end of the trade. Okay? Now, our enemies, African dealers selling slaves to whites on the Guinea coast. See that? Africans were selling us. See that? Africans were selling us. So the Hamites, Africans, the word Africa comes from Leo Scipio's Africanus. Right? And the Guinea coast, that's the west coast of Africa, what they call the Gold Coast. All right? So these people were selling us because we were cursed by the Lord. But what is the purpose of Christ? Let me come back to Luke, right? That we should be saved from these enemies and from the hands of all of us that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. He made a covenant with us, a pact with us, and he never broke it. Even though we broke the covenant, that's why we are in this condition to this very day. Let's go back to Baruch, third chapter and the ninth verse. Hear Israel the commandments of life. How happened it, Israel, that you are in your enemy's land? How did we get here? How happened in Israel, you are in your enemy's land? So another piece, Atlas of World History. You must have this in your library for you to understand. So how did we get here in our enemy's land? So Europe is now forming out 1000 AD. See that? See how Europe is forming out? We have Spain, the cow people of Cordova, which is going to become Spain, okay? We have France. We have Germany. We have Poland. We have England. Europe is forming out, okay? You must know geography. You must. You must study maps, okay? 
So how did we get to our enemy's land? Bang. One of the greatest maps ever. See that? So when they came in the age of exploration and conquest, the age of discovery of, ex of exploration and conquest, right? Now they came, after they came over and found this land, then they came to the west coast of Africa for slaves. See that? And that's how we ended up in our enemy's land. That's how we ended up in our enemy's land. So in, in Baruch now, he says, how happened it, Israel? Now, Israel is 12 tribes. He's not talking about one tribe. He's talking about the 12 tribes. How happened it, Israel, that you are now in your enemy's land? See that? Thou art waxing old in a strange country, that thou art defiled with the dead, that thou art counted with them that go down to the grave. Thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom. So who is the fountain of wisdom? The fountain of wisdom is the most high. So when you go to 1 Samuel, right, we forsook the Lord and the hell started. How did all these curses start to happen to us? Let's go back to 1 Samuel. I keep going back because these things are basic, but you must understand them. Okay? 1 Samuel, the 8th chapter. And it came to pass when Samuel was old. Right? I'm going to jump to 5. And he said unto his sons, Thou art old, and your sons walk not in our ways. But make us a king. See that? To judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel. Remember, you want to understand the beginning of our problems? All you got to do is look there. 1 Samuel, the 8th chapter, in the 7th verse. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they have said unto thee. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. So we rejected the Lord. So when you rejected the Lord now, hell is coming. Hell is coming. So now let's jump to Jeremiah now. Let's jump to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the second chapter. And the 13th and 14th verse is for my people, the 12 tribes of Israel, have committed two evils. They have forsaken me. You forsook the Lord, the fountain of living waters. See that? We forsook the Lord. He is the one whose water is life. He's the one whose water is life. So we forsook him. We forsook him. The fountain of living waters. And hewed them out cisterns. Broken cisterns that can hold no water. See that? So now you're into all type of philosophies. It can hold no water. So these people are not the people of the Lord. You being the people of the Lord. But now, because you turned from the Lord, the Lord cursed you, and the Lord became your enemy. Let's prove that. Let's go up in the book of Lamentations. Let's go up in the book of Lamentations, the fifth chapter. Let's go to Lamentations, the second chapter. And the fifth verse, the Lord was an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. See, the father became your enemy. Your own father became your enemy. He has swallowed you up. He has swallowed up all our palaces. He has destroyed his strongholds. He has increased in the daughter of Judah 
mourning and lamentation. See, the Lord did that. And the Lord used the nations against you. The Lord used your enemies against you. How do we know that? Let's go to the book of Psalms. How do we know the nations was your enemies and the Lord used them against you? Let's go to Psalms 17, verse 13 and 14. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. See that? So the Lord used the Romans, the other nations, because they are a sword for the Lord to be used from men see that so he said from men which are thy hand so the Lord uses men like I moved this cup from men of the world which have their portion in this life and whose belly thou fillest with their treasure they are full of tre children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes so nations was used against us. Nations was used against us. The people of the Bible, the indigenous people, are people of color. Now how do we further know that the people of the Bible or the Israelites were black people? Let's look at these pictures now. Let's look at these pictures, further proof, okay? How did we get to the west coast of Africa? Now, this picture is from a book that's about 100 years old. It's called Hebrewism of West Africa. You can look it up, okay? Now, this picture is from Nile to Niger, okay? The word Niger means black. But look at Jerusalem and our travels from 70 AD when Jerusalem was destroyed how we fled all the way to the west coast of Africa. Exhibit number one, bang. I'm gonna bring it real close so you can see, okay? Exhibit number one, this is Jerusalem. And in 70 AD after the destruction by the Roman Empire, this is how the Lord moved us to the west coast of Africa. See that? Making it clear. Good. That's exhibit number one. Exhibit number two. Ashanti ambassadors crossing the Pra River. A drawing from Sir Henry Morton Stanley. But look what is on his breastplate. Look well. Look at his metri on his head. Look at the metri on his head. Good. But look at the breastplate showing you that he's a priest of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. This is the breastplate that carries the symbolic stones of each tribe. That's where you get the word Jews from, jewels. Look at it. So where is these people that say that they're the people of the Lord? Where is that with them? Where were they in Africa? Where were they in Africa? They were never in Africa. They were never in Africa. Except to come and rob and steal. Except to rob and rob and steal. So, these people that you see that you call the Jews, the Lord said that they are our enemies. The Lord said that. They have never liked us. Not anything of our doing because the Lord chose us above everybody else. The Lord chose us above everybody else, okay? So now, just showing you from out of this book now, slavery. Now I have two other books that I'm gonna be going into, okay? Let's further move on. Showing you that these people were thieves and robbers. 
This one is about William Penn that black people idolize. Founder of Pennsylvania, signs a peace treaty with the Indians. Through a Quaker, he owned slaves. Many other Quakers traded in or profited from blacks until the late 1700s. So once again, Caucasians controlling the lives. But this is our destiny. This is our destiny. So here we are on the move, a slave coffle escorted by black overseers being marched from the African hinterland to the sea to be sold to white dealers. Many coffles traveled as far as 600 miles. Okay, so here we go. Slaves, okay, there we go. Slaves, look at us, being brought down. Nobody in there, being brought down. Okay, this is biblical history, how we ended up on what's called slave ships. Okay, how we ended up on what's called slave ships. Look well, all this I'm gonna go into. Look well at what they have done to us. That you smiling and styling and profiling for. Okay? Let's further go into this book. These are all curses. Let's further, let's further examine that. Let's go into the book of uh, Daniel. Let's go into the book of Daniel. Daniel verse 9, not Daniel, ninth chapter, the seventh verse. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto, unto us confusion of faces. You know what confusion of faces is? That you turn around and say that these are the Jews. Meanwhile, So showing you that you are confused, okay? Showing you that you're confused, look at Miriam, sister of Moses, dances with Israelite singers in a circle. But you are confused because you turn around and say, these are the Jews. You go through their neighborhoods and you say these, are the Jews. Meanwhile, the Lord said, you are cursed with confusion of faces. You don't even know your own face. You don't even know your own face. I was speaking to a brother, three grown men yesterday, and um, I was talking to them about Christ. And they said, well, I think he might be black. See that? Confusion of faces. They said, well, I think he might be black. I think. I'm not sure. I think he might be black. Look at us. These are all curses that I'm going to go into. I'm going to go into these curses. Because the Lord said he will curse us. He will curse us. So we are living in these curses to this very day. All right? So we fled in 70 AD from the Roman destruction. Here we go again. A buyer on the African coast examines a slave while his comrades exhibits trade goods to cavaliers. Good. See that? So here it is, just like the combine, just like the NFL combine, uh, the NBA combine, where they examine you. They examine your teeth. You know, they make you stand and bend and do all those things and jump and run to see how sound you are. Slaves, man. Slavery is part of the Bible, but the Lord told you it was coming for you. The Lord told you it was coming for you. Now, 
Was there Caucasians that helped us back then? Yes. Was every Caucasian dealing in slavery profiting from it? No. Here is a picture of Granville Sharp, pioneer abolitionist. To abolition means to abolish. He established through the courts that slavery was illegal in England. So there were many white people that were fighting for us that freed us up. Wait, Boston. Let's go to Boston that y'all love so much. Y'all love going to Boston. You know, I'm living in Boston. Boston, Massachusetts. Early stream age. The port shared with Newport, Rhode Island, the bulk of American slave trading, but Southerners bought most of the blacks. So most of the slaves were coming through Boston. They were profiting. So now you're getting American history right in front of your face. You're getting American history right in front of your face from out of one book. Bang. Look at good old Boston that you love. The old Boston Red Sox and all that. Boston Celtics and all this madness. Good. So now you know how you were built up. Now, the drafters of the Declaration of Independence, which guaranteed life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, except to slaves. You play a bad game with yourself, man, and you're trying to run up on me? You're trying to run up on me? All I'm giving you is the truth, man. Standing. Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Robert Livingston, John Adams, and Roger Sherman. See that? They never cared about you. They never cared about you. Here we go. Let a picture tell a thousand words. Let a picture tell a thousand words. What did the Lord say in the Bible? That this would be the king that you would want, and this is what the king would give you. This would be the king. So now you're dealing with your king. So now, how then did the tribes get into Africa, right? So now you have to go to this book, Babylon to Timbuktu, by Rudolf R. Windsor. So I'm putting together for you pieces of my library pieces of my library. I wasn't uh, planning on this today, but in here is books of my library that backs up, consolidates, and conforms the Bible. That's whole different topics, scriptures, and so forth like that. So from Babylon to Timbuktu, we had this book back in the early 90s. Okay, we used to read from out of it. This is the brother right here. Rudolf R. Windsor, he's still alive. Okay, y'all can check him out. Elderly brother. Okay. Let's go to page 84 to 85. Good. So Christ, Christ prophesied what destruction was going to come to Israel. Okay. In the year 65 BC, so you must understand time. That's another science when you're studying the Bible that you must understand. In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, so these are the, the Lord now is using these nations to destroy Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General Vespasian a Caucasian or an Edomite and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state, which is Israel, with great slaughter. 
During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue, the remnants of the people. Now, why did he say that? Because Israel was split into two, okay? There was something called the Northern Kingdom and something called the Southern Kingdom. The Northern Kingdom had already been taken out, okay? There was internal strife between us. Ephraim took the Northern Kingdom, which was called Samaria. So for you to understand this, you must go to 2 Kings, 1 Kings, first or 2 Kings, the 17th chapter and the 27th verse is going to tell you that. Then on top of that, the northern kingdom left where they were put in slavery and took ships and came to America. Now, how do we know that? Let's go to the apocrypha. Let's go back, right? But hold on, let me finish this, right? During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa, fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves, Jews, not these people. I always got to keep finding these characters that y'all believe to this day that they're the people of the Lord. See, now this religion, there is no religion in the Bible called Judaism. Judah is a black man. ISM was added on because these people, the converts, believe in the first five books of Moses, the laws of Moses. Now, there are many black sects to this day in Chicago, different black uh, Israelite groups that follow after these guys that don't believe in Christ. These guys don't believe in Christ. They never saw Christ. When the new, when, when the book of Revelation was done, the time span these people didn't get converted until the 800 AD. See, so you got to understand time and conversion. You must. You must know your history. Let me come back to Daniel 9 verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. So you know there's a lot of cats running around talking about they keep the laws of God and so forth like that. The Lord said, yeah, all Israel have transgressed the law. So none of us are perfect. You know, there's a lot of cats, oh, I keep the law, I keep the law, I keep the law. What law do you keep? Oh, you pick which laws? Okay, I understand. But you do not keep the law. Because for you to keep the law, you must keep all the law. All Israel have transgressed the law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. So we never obeyed the voice of the Lord. So when people tell me, oh, I, I, I follow the Lord. No, you don't. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. So we are living in curses. This is a curse. This is a curse. This is stolen face. This is stolen face. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Lord, because we have sinned against the Father. See that? So one of the curses is confusion of faces. What is confusion of faces? So you see these cats every Sunday, every Saturday, walking all through your neighborhoods with this on. And you tell your kids, those are the Jews. You are cursed. And this is a dog rag called the Talif. All it is is a piece of garment. And they say that God must hear them through this garment. Let me read that to you. 
The exploration of Jewish symbols in this book begins with the prayer shawl. See that? According to the Talmud, the Talmud is not our book. It is their book that the Europeans created. According to the Talmud, this exemplary right is the key to understanding other rights. The spirit of the Lord passes through the Talif via the written word. So they're saying that this garbage cloth, the spirit of the Lord passes through the, this. This garbage that they take off and put on. See that? So where did I get that from? Symbols of Judaism, a very great book for you to read, see, and understand what traditions that they do, what was stolen, when you pass their temples. What are they doing in their temples? Look at what they're doing in their temples. They're trying to read uh, whatever they consider to be scriptures, to be holy scriptures, okay? which has nothing to do with the Bible. You must study to show thyself approved. Okay? This is an internal view of their synagogue. This is an internal view of their synagogue. Bang. This has nothing to do with the Lord. Nothing. Even the menorah is stolen. This is a menorah. The menorah represents the tribes of Israel. Each side and Christ is in the middle. Six times two is 12. Christ being the center, that makes it seven. Good. So just showing you how they stole our stuff. Now, this is how the ancient parchments used to be. This is how the scrolls were back in the days before you had a book, like you got a book now, like how you had a Bible now. You'd unroll the parchments, you'd take it out, you'd unroll it, you know, the Isaiah scroll, and read it. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example now. So here it is, these dogs, is now manifesting how it used to be back in the days with this garment on, but we never wore this garment. A lot of you draw pictures of us wearing these garments. We never wore this garment, okay? We never wore dog garments like this. These are the garments that we used to wear. Look at our royal garments, man. Look at our royal garments. This is all the way back coming out of Exodus. Look at this. Look at the crowns that they wore on their head. Okay? So now here's another picture of how each scroll, until it was combined into a book form. There we go. See that? That's how the scrolls work. Ezekiel, Isaiah, Obadiah. Okay? They stole this from us. This is shofar, ram's horn. They stole these things. These things are written in the Bible. Okay, the ram's horn to call the people. Uh, they stole these things. Okay, these are written in the Bible. Uh, so this is a great book for you to here again, you see these people and you think that they're the people of the Lord. You must study, man. You must study. So I'm going to put this aside for a minute. Right, I'm going to put that aside for a minute. So now we understand that we are cursed. Okay? Confusion of faces. Right? So let's come back now. Here... Let's come back to Babylon the Timbuktu. 
it says, fleeing from Roman persecution. So now we know that they're not the people of the Lord because they're white. We now being black fled from Roman persecution and slavery. Remember what we read earlier, slaves. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. This prophecy and all the residue of the prophecies contained in Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 to 68, befell the black Jews after they disobeyed the laws of the Lord. Many nations transported the Jews, the Israelites, into slavery. So you got to take that name out, Jews, Israelites into slavery. The sons of Israel transmitted to every continent. Now, is that biblical? Let's go. Is that biblical? Let's go up into the book of Matthew first. Let's go up into the book of Matthew. Let's go up in the book of Matthew. 24. Let's see what Christ said. Let's go up in the book of Luke. Now this is a very deep chapter. Very, not deep chapter, a very deep topic. Matthew 24 chapter. And the Savior went out, verse 1, and departed from the temple. Right? He departed from the temple. Right? He departed from the temple. And his disciples came to show him the building of the temple. And the Savior said unto them, Seeing not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. See that? So he's giving them a future prophecy. Now, when he jumped to Matthew 24, verse 16, he says, Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is in the housetop. So now Rome is attacking. Rome is attacking. Okay? Let him which is in the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Woe unto them that be with child. We began to eat our children because Rome starved us out. Rome locked off everything coming in. We had no more food coming in. We were under siege. They were attacking. So now no food is coming in. We, re we move to cannibalism. How do I know that? Let's go, to two, let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Show you that we move to cannibalism. Deuteronomy 28, verse 53. I'm going to start at 52. Now, the prophecy was given to Moses of exactly what Christ is talking about way back at the time of Moses. And Moses had to tell you these are curses. Wait, I haven't even gotten to America yet. I haven't even gotten to America in the ships, which is one book. I got three books, okay? And Deuteronomy 28, verse 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. So Jerusalem was thoroughly shut off by the Roman Empire. And not only did Rome come, Rome had other armies that were with her mercenaries and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fell walls come down wherein you trusted so you didn't trust in the Lord you trusted in yourself and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land which the Lord have given thee and thou shalt eat the fruit of your own body you know what's the fruit of your own body your kids so now you're starving your kids. You killed and ate your kids, man. The flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters. Cannibalism. So how are you better than other people? Read it. Deuteronomy 28, 52 and 53. Which the Lord thy power hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherein thine enemies shall distress thee. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate 
his eyes shall be evil towards his brother. Peace, Lord. Shall be evil towards his brother and towards the wife of his bosom and towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children, whom he, he shall eat. These are curses. Because he have nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness, wherein thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. So we, the people of the Lord, Babylon the Timbuktu, we, the people of the Lord, went into cannibalism. We went into hell. We went into hell, man. We went into hell. So heaven and hell is not some place that exists, some place out there. We were in hell right here upon the earth. See that? So let's go. Let's close out with one last verse. I'm going to pick up this story again. Let's go on a loop. Go on a loop. 21st chapter. Of Luke. 21st chapter and the 20th verse. Look how Luke is matching Babylon to Timbuktu. And when you shall see Jerusalem, this is Christ talking, compassed with armies, then know the desolation thereof is nigh. Let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them which are in the countries therein enter go back. For these are the days of vengeance. What vengeance? The Lord is coming at you. And he's using these nations. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto you that are with child. See that? Because you're going to eat your kids. And to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress upon the land and wrath upon the people and you shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations wait babylon the timbuktu and it's been estimated that over one million jews fled into africa fleeing from roman persecution and slavery the slave markets were full of black jewish slaves this is part one history linking up to the Bible, showing you heaven and hell, showing you hell for us as a people upon the earth. And this garbage is a lie. This garbage is a lie. Peace.